great class, and I'm going to sleep at the end uh, of uh, the day today. So here we go. We are on our final week of Viewpoint. We've been looking at the beginning of this year uh, at four disciplines that every believer needs to have in their lives. This sermon series is called Viewpoint. And the reason we called it Viewpoint is because how you view these four disciplines in your walk will determine how successful you are in walking out your faith. We talked about uh, uh, fasting the very first week because we started off uh, with uh, talking about the 21 days. Uh, the second week we talked about uh, prayer. Uh, the third week we talked about giving. And now today we're going to be talking about the fourth thing, which is serving. And how you view these four fundamental disciplines will determine how successful you are uh, in your walk with God. I think it really comes down to humility. We've shared this each and every week. Uh, because if you view these four things in a humble way, if you have a humble heart towards these things, what happens is there's a shift. And instead of saying, I have to do these things, you begin to say, I get to do these things. Yeah. You see the difference? There's a big difference there. Yeah, now um, every week we've also talked about our core values. And this week we want to go over our fourth core value, which is to celebrate. So we've talked about how um, you know we create a relationship with God. We connect um, others with God. We contribute to the world around us. And how we celebrate what God is doing in the world around us. And um, you know, one of the things that we often talk about as a team is we get more of what we celebrate. And um, one of the things that we really feel like it's um, important for us to do is to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives. And we celebrate the one. We celebrate the one person that's life is changed by the love of God. And this, we celebrate the love of God through what we do. And, and I think that it's important for us to realize that what, how we are, what we do, how we impact the world around us, it's not just by doing a good deed, it's by us actually being like Jesus to those around us. It's, it's really important, and today we're talking about serving because ultimately Jesus was God's servant. You can't... Think about Jesus without thinking about how he was the servant of God. Right. And in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, uh, it's, there's a verse there that our kids are actually learning today in conjunction with this message. And it says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me. That's Paul speaking. Uh, it was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And the reason the kids are talking about that is because these three things that are here in this verse should define our uh, desire to serve. It's grace, faith, and love. Yeah, we often hear faith, hope, and love. But today we're going to be talking about grace and what the importance of grace is when we're talking about being a servant. They're literally tools that we can use to serve others. And so uh, as we get into it today, we start with this. We got to start with that place of humility, just like every other week where we see uh, serving is an opportunity. It's a gift from God where we can uh, be a blessing to someone else. And in the process, we ourselves are blessed. How many of you know that when you uh, when you step out to serve someone in a, in a way that maybe you hadn't done before, that maybe at first you're a little resistant, but as you begin to do it, doesn't it always bless you uh, after you begin to do it? You know, I think of Des, you know, with, uh, with the soup kitchen. Uh, she stepped out in that way, and look at all the blessings that have come back into her life as a result of that. And that's true of any time that we serve uh, others and serve God uh, as, as the people of God. Well, I think, too, it's um, perspective. So we're going to be talking about servant, but there's a very fine line between slave and servant. If I become someone's slave, my attitude is quickly changed. If my perspective is that I'm being forced to be a slave or 
if I have adopted a humble aspect of being a servant. Think about it. In scripture, Paul was a slave to Christ, but he didn't take on a perspective of, I have been forced to be a slave. And I think a lot of times we get mixed up with what our ideas of being someone's humble servant truly is. We get mixed up in an act of servanthood because we think too highly of ourselves. And today we're gonna really kind of break open some things and I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I really hope you wore your steel shoes. Yeah. Okay, so turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter two. That's where we're going today, Philippians chapter two. We also have our U version uh, notes on uh, U version if you wanna follow along there. We'll be in the New Living Translation uh, as we learn about what it means to be a servant uh, and how to serve with the right attitude so that we can truly uh, take advantage of everything that God intends for us to experience through serving. Right, because right here, right off the bat, it says, have the attitude of Christ. And we all know that Christ's attitude was one of boastfulness, and he had it like all together. He was all that and a bag of chips, right? Okay, here I mean, we go. he was all those things. Yeah, but he didn't throw it in anybody's face. True story. So yeah. let's read about it. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any <coughs> fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Here we go. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, I'm asking for your help this morning. God, Corey and I, um, we, we don't have anything to offer in and of ourselves. God, this word needs to come from you. So Holy Spirit, we submit our, our, our mouths to you. And God, we ask that each and every person here this morning would submit their ears to you as well. Let him who has ears to hear, hear what you are saying to them today. God, help us to grow in our ability to serve one another so that we can truly look more like you to tomorrow than we do today. God, help us in this way, because this doesn't come natural. We need to be challenged. We need to be helped. And so, God, we ask for your, your help today as we humble ourselves in obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Now, Paul is talking to the, the church in Philippi here, and he's kind of given them, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really a set of guidelines for how to relate to one another, how to serve one another. Another. How many of you know that the New Testament is full of one another's, right? There, it's all throughout the New Testament. Love one another, forgive one another, uh, prefer one another. Uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. All of those one another's are actually opportunities to serve each other. And so here in this verse, we see many, many uh, opportunities for that. But what's most important here is that Paul takes time to deal with the attitude attached to serving. How many of you know that you can do something really good, but if you've got a bad attitude, nobody wants to see it. Nobody wants to feel it, right? Have you ever, have you ever gone out for dinner and your, your uh, server just doesn't want to be there and you can feel that? Like, have you ever experienced that? Like, it, it's like, let's just get through this thing, right? Without anybody killing anybody and let's just be done, right? 
Um, well, the fact of the matter is, is that in our own relationships, even within the church, sometimes we can take on this, I have to serve attitude. Well, how many of you know, if you have to do it, it's not going to be nearly as powerful as if you say, I get to do it. I get to serve others. I get to be a servant to the people around me. And so Paul takes a minute to say, look, all these things are good. You should do these things, but make sure that while you do them, you should have the same attitude as Christ, who, even though he was a, a, all that in a bag of chips, like you said, um, he, didn't, he, didn't start, he didn't come from that place. He came from a place of humility as a servant. Okay, so we put up a point here that says we imitate Christ by serving others. Yes. But this is a trickery, y'all. This point is meant to get you to think. Have you ever had imitation crab meat? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's good, no. It's white fish that has been dyed red. It is not crab meat. Where all my Marylanders at, <laughs> right? Come on. Crab meat is a very wonderful thing, especially when it is lump crab meat fixed with just the right amount of oh, mayonnaise, mustard, on. and Old Bay, lumped now, together, lightly fried with no filling. It is the 21 days of prayer and fasting, my dear. <laughs> If, if you have never had a proper Maryland crab cake, one day get me jumbo lump crab and I will make you a proper Maryland crab <laughs> cake. But let me tell you, imitation crab meat is not crab cake. And it don't make a good crab cake, y'all. Now let me, let me tell you why. We imitate Christ by serving others. We do not become like him by just serving others. There is an attitude that we must have to become like Christ. And this is so incredibly important because all the good deeds in the world cannot make us like him. Paul said, I, I, could, I could give everything I have to the poor. I could be the, the perfect example of, of, of holiness and righteousness. I could, I could give everything uh, in my life to help others. And yet, if I don't have love, I, 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 it's empty. It, there's, it's useless. And so if we want to serve, we need to make sure that our attitude's right. Uh, as we begin to do that. And so that's what Paul is saying here again. He's kind of echoing that same idea. Look, it's great to be humble and to serve, but if you've got a bad attitude or if it's not quite right, uh, there's something that needs to be dealt with. Right, and I, I want to just push this a little bit farther, Jeremiah. I really feel like the world has <laughs> kind of taken service projects and helping others and equated that with love. Okay, we love others by doing good for them. And I'm not saying that's wrong because we are to do good. We are to help others. It is an act of showing love. But that is not how we imitate Christ. We imitate Christ by doing these things that were written right here. By humbling ourselves. Um, even though, uh, and, and not thinking of ourselves of having equality with God. It's this, this humble attitude that turns serving from a trial to a gift. From something I have to do to something I get to do. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress, impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourself. Don't look only at your own interests, but take on the interest of others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. You know, this, this gets back to this idea of imitation. You know, um, I was thinking this week uh, as an example 
Um, I really like celebrity impressions. Have you ever like watched uh, like celebrity impressions? Somebody kind of doing an impression of another person. I was I was thinking about this this week because of this word imitate. You know, uh, imitation is the uh, sincerest form of flattery, right? Uh, and um, there are some really good celebrity impressionists out there. But when you see somebody do an impression that is perfect, we say it's spot on, right? Like there are some, some guys that can do, uh, and gals that can do impressions of others, and it's like spot on. I wonder sometimes how, how good our impression of Christ is in the world around us. I wonder if people would look at us and say, are we spot on? I think the difference between sort of doing a good job and being spot on when it comes to imitating Christ is the heart behind our acts of service. It's this verse right here. Not just doing good things because we feel like we have to to get into heaven and not just doing good deeds because it's the right thing to do, but doing them because we get to do them. Mark 9, verse 35. It says, he sat down, called the 12 disciples over to him and said, whoever wants to be the first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Yeah, it's like Jesus is saying, look guys, if you want, if you want to get into this thing, you got to really start to love being humble. Ain't nobody saying amen. amen. Right? Because we don't, by nature, love being humble. Do you? So it, it's not just love the homeless, it's love the person that sits next to you at work that wants you to know how great they are. It's love your brother or your sister, like your biological one, that constantly wants you to feel like you're not good enough. It's love your neighbor, like your literal one <laughs> that shoveled all the way up to your line <laughs> and stopped. How about love your enemies? Pray for those who despitefully use you. Like there, there are things that, that, that show that we are truly like Christ and moves our imitation of Christ from just cheap whitefish pressed together and painted red to true... So much sodium. I know, it's full of it, but anyway. You, you got me back on food I'm again. Sorry. This is terrible. <laughs> um, but you follow, you see that the imitation of Christ really comes down to not whether or not we do these things, but how we do these things. Amen. How we serve is actually more important than whether or not we serve at all. Because if you think you're serving, but you're not serving in the right way, it's like Paul said, it's a clanging gong. It's a symbol of emptiness. There's nothing to it because it's not motivated by a love and a humility that comes from being, wanting to be just like Jesus. And so Jesus is telling them here in Mark, he says, look, if you guys want to be great in my kingdom, you got to learn to be the servant of all. Get really good at being humble. Really start to embrace humility in everything you do, whether you're fasting, serving, giving, uh, or serving, uh, it, can, it comes from a place of humility. Okay, so we, we've known a little bit about humility over the last couple of weeks. We've all heard love makes a difference, Amen. right? Okay, so now look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, God saved you by his grace. grace. When you believed, and you can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done, so none of us can boast about it. You mean I don't get into heaven because I help an old lady across the street? No. You mean I don't go into heaven because I've just had my life all together and followed every rule? No. It's grace. That has been given to you as a gift. Right. Now, we're going to talk just a moment about this grace. 
I, I think as believers, we have been given a gift of grace from our Heavenly Father, and we do not extend grace as a gift to the world around us. It is the most underused gift in our body, in our kingdom, that the Lord has given us that we do not extend to our world around us. And it's completely unnecessary. Like, it's complete. We don't, we don't deserve the grace we get, right? Like, that's the definition of grace. That grace is something you don't earn. You can't earn grace. And yet, we want the people around us to earn the grace we, we are, we're meant to give away. I often wonder if grace and forgiveness can be... Um, Yes, one and the same. Thank you. Like, God has given us forgiveness, and it's up to us to forgive others for us to maintain forgiveness. God has given us grace. Is it up to us to give grace for us to maintain grace? Oh, no. Okay. But it is a gift that we have grace. Why then is it not something that we give out freely? Why is grace something that we wield? Why is judgment something that we give freely? And grace something that we withhold? This really messed with me this week because I realized that there is a whole part of my uh, ability to serve other people that I really need to work on. Can I tell you what it is? Forgiveness. Y'all can act like you got it together. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that every person in this house today can serve somebody else in your life right now by extending forgiveness or asking for it. One of the best ways to serve someone else is to forgive. And yet we don't recognize it as something that we can serve one another with. We don't recognize that, you know what? Maybe if I would just own what I can own in a situation, maybe I could serve that other person. So here's my question. Is there someone, are there people, in your life that you can serve simply by saying, I want you to know that I'm sorry. I want to ask for your forgiveness. forgiveness. I want to forgive you for what you did. You may not even know you did it. I forgive you. That's like 2.0. That is serving and not just imitation crab style. <laughs> That's the real deal. When someone asks for forgiveness and extends the grace of Jesus in a moment, in return, that's when you know you're dealing with a true Christ follower. So I want to encourage you guys. Where's the place in your life where you could... Just extend a little bit of forgiveness or a little bit of grace as an act of service. Grace is demonstrated during our interaction with people around us. If you have grace as a part of your life, you give grace to those around you. You are far less likely to be offended and hurt when you understand grace. You look for opportunities to serve others, to show grace, and your response to people emulates Christ's grace poured out on you. In 1 Peter 4.10, it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Serving with faith, love, and grace is our definition as a Christ follower. How can we serve Christ? 
without serving each other grace. It is the very definition of why he came. It's so that we had grace. If it is not a part of our day in and day out life, then we are missing the greatest opportunity to show his love. Would you stand with us this morning? Jesus, we come to you today <laughs> recognizing that you are the standard of grace. That you are the standard of what a servant looks like. And today, God, we don't want to just imitate you. God, we want to take on the same attitude as you. We want to move into a place where we truly exhibit your attitude with the people around us. Specifically in relation to this thing about forgiveness. God, I'm asking for help this morning so that your people can respond to this word. I would ask just all across the room, can we just humble our hearts right now in a moment so that we can let down our guard with the Holy Spirit and let him do a work in us that can set us free. Maybe today you stand here like I do with her from a brother or sister in Christ. And you realize today, along with me, that one of the greatest ways that you can serve that person is to extend forgiveness. Maybe like me, you don't want to. Too bad. This is what it means to truly be like Christ. Who on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So God, we put aside our pride, myself included. And right now, God, I recognize that I need to forgive. I can see the names. I can see the faces. If that's you this morning and you want to join me, would you just raise your hand right, right where you are and say, I'm going to take, I'm going to follow, follow Christ's lead here. I'm going to forgive. I'm, going to, I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to forgive them. If a conversation needs to happen and you need to go to that person, I would encourage that. God, you see the hands that are raised. They mean so much to you because they're important conversations. They're important moments where we can extend forgiveness and be forgiven ourselves. God, we take the humble position of a servant and we ask God that you would help us to serve in these ways. God, I forgive them. God, I ask for forgiveness. And I ask, God, that you would help us to love one another. Maybe today you would say, you know, Jeremiah, I, I really kind of seen serving as something I have to do. And this morning I, I want to make that adjustment. I want to see it as something I get to do. I want that change to happen in me. Today, if that's you, would you lift your hands up right where you are? Just to say, I'm making that turn this morning. I'm making that shift. Yeah. Thank you, Father. God, you see the responses. You know our hearts. God, I'm asking that you would continue to make us look more like you. Help us be more like you in all that we say and all that we do change our viewpoint of serving so that we can truly imitate you in all things. In Jesus' name.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.